the legendary Kentucky coach, John Calipari, is saying bye-bye to Lexington. He's right now in the process of finalizing, or process, finalizing a five-year contract. John Calipari getting a five-year deal to become the next head men's basketball coach at Arkansas. A lateral move in the holy Southeastern Conference, Batman. And uh, multiple reports in the overnight here, Sunday into Monday, indicating that this is going to happen. Now, we're told the deal is not done, but is expected to be done when that pesky little sun comes up later on here on Monday. So for the purposes of this Maller monologue, let's assume that John Calipari does end up signing the sign and ends up going to Arkansas. So let's discuss the question, why? Let's get to the why. Why is John Calipari going to leave Kentucky for Arkansas? There were rumors after the NCAA tournament loss to Oakland that Calipari was going to be fired, and then they agreed he was going to stay. They talked about it, they had a powwow, and they said, ah, you're going to stay. Uh, So I've got poultry, ruffles bag, and soccer moms, and we will combine all of these things together, and we are going to make a bunch of new suits, which John Calipari is going to have to buy to match the Arkansas colors. I don't know that those the blue outfits that he wore at Kentucky occasionally. I don't think that's going to work in his new home there in in Arkansas. So so let's discuss now. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. We'll start with the obvious, the Komodo dragon in the room. John Calipari did not have to do this. He could have stayed. Kentucky was willing to keep him. They didn't want to eat the 30 plus million dollars. That's the thing about this. Calipari had the 30 million guaranteed. It would have taken a buyout of the proportion of Texas A&M boosters with their football coach Jimbo Fisher and sliced bread. To, to take care of John Calipari. And so it, it really depends on what side of the aisle you're on. If you were someone that was anti-Calipari and wanted him gone, then you look at Arkansas as the guardian angel that is the savior for Coach Cal, gives him a landing spot, and then you get your new coach. But I look at it, I'm like, what are you doing? This guy has the razzmatazz. And uh, now, I understand you're supposed to win in the tournament and all that. The alumni want wins in the tournament. But in terms of cachet – for a university, having all of these players go to the next level in professional basketball and many of them turning out to be star-level players that were from your school, that that means something. That's, that's, in many respects, more valuable than winning championships, which sounds crazy to say, but I don't believe it is. I don't believe it is crazy to say. You're the school that has all the superstar players and all that, but when you look at this, we believe that John Calipari, the reason he's doing this is because he's just fed up with the bullpucky. And this thing came out of nowhere, right? It's a trickle-down effect. The USC coach, Andy Enfeld, went to uh, to Texas to coach uh, in that state. And then uh, that opened up that job. And so Arkansas, their coach went to SC, Musselman. And then that opened up the Arkansas job. And then, ta-da! Here comes John Calipari. There'll be a test on this later. Uh, but Calipari tired of, to quote Jay Scoop again, the bullpucky. Uh, had enough of the bullpucky at Arkansas, the cloud of negativity. And so he's, I don't want that. I don't need a mushroom cloud of negativity here. Why, why would I mess around with that? I don't want to deal with that. Now, the Wildcats have been bad in the tournament in recent years. One in four of their last five tournament games, they were knocked out by a school that we never heard of, Oakland. Not the Oakland from Northern California, the Oakland from Michigan in the first round this year, and I remember a couple years back, uh, St. Peter's beat Kentucky, and that was embarrassing. That was a number 15 seed. So you lost to a 14 seed and a 15 seed two of the last three years in the tournament, and um, he thinks that's not going to make the alumni happy. It obviously did not make the alumni happy. And so John Calipari treated the Kentucky basketball fan, the negative fan, uh, treated them like the social network. And sometimes you have to unfollow people in life. So he unfollowed the Kentucky basketball fans. And he he knows, he's, this is not his first rodeo, he's been around a little bit, he knows going to a new school what's going to happen. Everyone's going to kiss his ass, and you're like the new hero. And, oh, my, John Calipari, how do we get this guy? Unbelievable, right? And 
uh, be wise. He's wise enough you know, at his age. Right? He's been around a long time. He, he's wise enough to know you can you can walk away from all the nonsense and just move on. And he can play the role of carpetbagger. And he's done it before. He can do it again. And so it goes to Arkansas. Everyone will go gaga for him and, and all that. And you can thank all of this because of poultry. Without poultry, this would not happen. Right? The guy John Tyson from uh, – he's a, a billionaire heir to the Tyson food. There's a sound sound of his company at work there in the factory. Um, and and so he's the, he's the money man. He's the sugar daddy that is making all this, facilitating this to happen. And without that, uh, that there's a lot of big money people in Arkansas. Right? You got the, the Walmart people. You got the Tyson Food people. There's some other big companies there, but they're, they're, they're the ones with the deep pockets that are, in this case, it's the Tyson Food people that are taking care of it. So tremendous, tremendous upgrade in stature for the Arkansas basketball program. Now, real quick, at Kentucky, what happens to the Kentucky basketball program without John Calipari? So they lose the debonair, uh, the, the razzmatazz. The, uh, the, the, Calipari had all that. He had all that, right? He had this. He had something special. Now maybe you'll be better, right? There's in Kentucky, they can get anybody they want. They can they can at least think they can get anyone they want. And the uh, rumors in the overnight here, they're going to make a run at Dan Hurley, the coach at Connecticut, will be in the national championship game tonight. Uh, why would he want to do that? Uh, well, money. That would be why you would do that, right? If there's enough money. Uh, everyone is just a godfather offer away from going anywhere. That's how life works. And so he said, well, there's no way he'd leave the Northeast to go to Kentucky. Okay, uh, well, if you put enough zeros on there, all of a sudden, suddenly that looks more attractive and you enjoy grits and Southern food uh, and you can find a reason to go. And then outside of that, you got Billy Donovan, who's on a dead-end job with a bad Bulls team. Would he want to come back and deal with the headaches of NIL and college basketball? And uh, you know, other names will be tossed out. Scott Drew of Baylor, for example, is is one. So we'll keep an eye on that. Now, quickly, we will touch on women's hoops. Uh, page two here. The uh, I'm told that uh, South Carolina. I didn't watch this game, but they decommissioned Iowa. Uh, I was busy, you know, I was doing stuff. Uh, didn't interest me enough to to tune in. Uh, but South Carolina ends up knocking out Iowa. So uh, the, the the better story in the losing locker room, right? We always say the better story in the losing locker room. So that means the star of stars in women's college basketball has exited stage left. So has Caitlin Clark. Has she forever changed the landscape in American sport? And is women's college basketball now on the map to stay? So I'm a skeptic on this. I I, I am a, a, a skeptic. The arrow is pointing towards no, right? The arrow on this one is pointing towards no. I mean, it's been a magic carpet ride. I know. I'll be I'll be Benny Buzzkill. I, I just have to see it to believe it. And while it has been Nice and a good story and something I did not expect to happen up until this point. I believe the story ends with Caitlin Clark leaving and going to professional basketball. Uh, and it's a nice story. And they'll write books about it. Maybe they'll make a movie about it, and that'll be great. And get some buttered popcorn and some candy, and you can watch the movie and knock yourself out. But I, I really am curious how many of these casual observers, because that's who's watching these games, how many of these casual observers – that aren't passionate P1s, as we like to say in radio, P1 fans of women's college basketball who have tuned into these Iowa games, how many of them are going to keep watching? And the answer is not many, right? The answer is, and we have empirical data from over the years that the answer is not many, that you know people tune in for stars and storylines. And for whatever reason, Caitlin Clark's story resonated with a lot of people, and they tuned in, they liked the story, she had a rivalry. We saw that game with LSU a while back, and not that long ago, a few days ago. Uh, so fine. All right, there you go. So you had that, but it's it's the storyline, it's the star power, and it was Caitlin Clark and uh, that and a bag of chips, right? And so now that Caitlin Clark is gone, you have an empty Ruffles bag is what you have, and uh, that's about it, right? This increase in viewership is an anomaly, I believe it's an anomaly. Will I be proven wrong? We'll find out. Time will tell. Um, but it's it's an, an edge case, right? It's an oddity is what it is. And I just don't see it uh, continuing. I wouldn't bet my mortgage on it continuing. 
Uh, now, final point, real real quick. Will Caitlin Clark take the fans that have followed her to the WNBA? Is that going to happen? Now, I do think there will at least briefly be a small uptick. I'm not naive enough to think that the, out of curiosity, curiosity killed the cat, that uh, people will tune in to see sample the product. But if you've ever watched a WNBA game, the product's terrible. So why would you stay, right? They're serving bad food. Uh, you don't go to a restaurant that serves bad food and keep eating it, right? The food's terrible. Are you going to catch the fever from the Indiana fever? Probably not. Probably not, right? Now, that said, the WNBA, uh, they're played during the summer months, and that's when you got barbecues, you got to go to the beach, you know, you got to live your life, right? Go out and the weather's good and places all over the place. Uh, now, there is one thing that can change all of this, not only for the WNBA, but also for women's college basketball. And uh, that is, they don't need any, uh, we've said this for years, they don't need any dudes. It's all about the soccer mom. If you can just get women to fall in love with women's sports, which, by the way, they don't. They don't like women's sports. But if you can get enough women to watch it and enjoy it at high percentages, you don't need any men. You know, all these women that complain, oh, you evil men. The reason women's sports don't work is because of men. That is a lie. It is an absolute lie. There are more women than men. So only the, if only women watch it, just a small percentage of dudes. Right, and there's enough dudes that like I'll watch uh, just that, and then all the way you're done, you're good. You don't need men. You got more women. Look at the numbers in the United States: the male to female ratio. It's about even, but the population trends show there are more females than males. U.S. male to female ratio: 97 males to every 100 females. Okay, fine. So just get the women to watch. You don't need the men. No men needed. It's a ladies club. That's it.